Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. Theatrical run for Deadpool and Wolverine has reached its end. As of now, it stands as the highest grossing R-rated movie ever, and it reached $1.2 billion. To celebrate the success of this blockbuster, a lot of info about alternate endings, concept art, and more have been released online. Additionally, the writers who worked on Deadpool and Wolverine revealed that a cameo from Iron Man was originally planned for the movie. So in this video, we're going to explore the exact scene where RDJ was supposed to make his return, the reasons why he didn't end up appearing in the movie, and how the final fight sequence was altered. All right, this is going to be a very interesting one. First, we've got to talk about the deleted Deadpool and Wolverine variants from this movie, because that's what's blowing up online right now. So far, we've only seen nine Wolverine variants in the movie, but there were supposed to be more, especially this one variant, Cold War Wolverine. This Wolverine was originally set in the Captain America First Avenger timeline and was supposed to appear in this movie. Look here, he's holding a gun in one hand, and in the other hand, you could see hooks instead of claws. They really gave this Wolverine a unique, badass look. I'm not sure if he was just a regular soldier or a mutant, but those hooks instead of claws? That's something different. They had planned for Hugh Jackman to take on this role, making him look normal yet totally badass. I still can't figure out why they cut this Wolverine variant, but he was supposed to be in the movie. Fans have been buzzing about Wolverine Pool showing up in this movie for a long time. If you think about the final fight in the movie, the Deadpool Corvus was supposed to make an appearance and Wolverine Pool was supposed to be part of that crew. We even had a leak before the movie that Wolverine Pool was going to be in it, but I have no clue why they decided to drop this variant. And the person who created the official concept art for the movie recently shared it online, and let me tell you, Wolverine Pool looks absolutely stunning. Just by looking at him, I'm blown away. I can't even tell if he's Wolverine variant or Deadpool variant. That's how incredible he looks. And in the final fight, Wolverine Pool was supposed to go head to head with Deadpool and Wolverine, but due to budget constraints, they had to scrap him. And if you've watched the movie, you'll notice that all the variants that made it into the final cut were pre-planned and the ones removed were only due to budget issues. I can't even begin to imagine how Deadpool would have reacted to seeing these variants in the movie. Instead of showing hundreds of Deadpool variants, it would have been way cooler if they had just focused on 10 powerful variants going up against our Deadpool and Wolverine. And not only that, but Deadpool's variant Pump Pool could have also made an appearance in this movie. And if you've seen Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, you might remember the Spider-Punk Spider-Man. Well, this Punk Pool character is inspired by Spider-Punk Spider-Man. And let me tell you, this anarchist Deadpool with a look that's just so cool. I'm really getting those Spider-Man vibes. It would have been awesome if they had given this variant some spider powers too. Since they already did that in Spider-Verse, they couldn't include it in this movie due to rights issues and budget constraints. So they ended up canceling it. And did you notice Kid Pool in this movie? Kid Pool was holding a gun, but originally they had planned for him to wield a lightsaber instead. In the comics, Kid Pool is usually seen with a lightsaber. That's actually Star Wars lightsaber. But animating a lightsaber is no small task, and since they already created the costume for Kid Pool, they decided not to spend extra on lightsaber VFX, especially just for Kid Pool. So they swapped the lightsaber for guns. So in this movie, Kid Pool was supposed to have a lightsaber instead of a gun, but they deliberately left it out. And following this, in the original movie, the entire fight sequence happened in a city block. However, their initial plan was to to make the entire Wolverine and Deadpool fight sequence against Deadpool core to happen in the void. During this fight, along with Deadpool and Wolverine, the Resistance team was also supposed to join in to take on the Deadpool core, and that's why they created this concept art. If you look closely at the concept art, you'll see that along with Deadpool and Wolverine, the Resistance team is also fighting alongside them. And you can spot two or three extra characters from the Resistance team, particularly Daredevil. You can find him pretty easily here. So technically, Ben Affleck's Daredevil was supposed to to appear here along with Elektra. We did see Elektra in the movie, and there was a rumor that Ben Affleck also portrayed as Daredevil in this movie. Even I thought Ben Affleck's Daredevil would make an appearance, but that might have been canceled due to budget constraints. Plus, in real life, there was some drama going on between Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner, probably because of their personal issues. Now, coming back to the concept art, you can see Ghost Rider in the background. So, they had planned for Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider to appear in this movie too, but again, it got canceled due to budget issues. Just think about it, they would have had to spend a ton on him because he's practically all VFX, from his head to his costume and bike, and so they decided to cancel it due to huge VFX costs. 
According to the original concept art, Daredevil and Ghost Rider were supposed to be part of the Resistance team. To replace these two characters, they brought in X-23 and Gambit and apart from Blade, Elektra and Johnny Storm, who were included as per the original plan. In the original ending fight scene, they were supposed to face off against the Deadpool Corp with this Resistance team and all of this was supposed to happen in the void. Not only that, but there were also supposed to be more Deadpool variants included in the Deadpool Corp as we saw in the movie. If you look closely here, you can spot Rex Pool. Now, that would have been fun to see on screen. Can you imagine how they would have dealt with him? That would have been tough, right? But of course, they had to keep the VFX budget in check. And look at this Deadpool character. This character actually appeared in the comics as the champion of the universe, and he was supposed to appear as Deadpool in this movie. Even within the Deadpool core, he would be roaming around in Deadpool form. Technically, he's not Wade Wilson. He's a different character known as the champion of the universe, and he's also incredibly powerful. So he was supposed to be included in the movie, particularly in the final fight, but they ended up canceling it. I think they really tried to bring in Deadpool variant from the Star Wars universe. Especially if you look closely, you can see someone holding a lightsaber in the background. I'm pretty sure that could have been Jedi Deadpool. A Star Wars crossover with Deadpool was supposed to happen, but as I mentioned earlier, the additional VFX budget probably led to its cancellation. And if you notice, Johnny Storm should have appeared all the way until the final fight scene in this movie. Even Deadpool roasted him in the mid portion of the movie, which took up a good chunk of the VFX budget. Johnny Storm is also a complete VFX character, which is why they only used his human torch form for a short period. But in the final fight, he was supposed to be included. And from the start, they planned to spend only $200 million on this movie, so they removed all these characters to keep the budget from skyrocketing. I actually think that's a good thing because it helped ground the movie. Based on this concept art, they were literally going all out trying to bring in all these characters, but the VFX cost forced them to cut back. I feel good about that decision, but at the same time, I'm bummed that we didn't get to see these characters in the movie. How do you feel about it? Don't forget to comment below. They had originally planned an extraordinary fight scene for this movie, but it ended up being scaled back due to VFX constraints. Moving on, they've also talked about some deleted scenes. In particular, Ryan Reynolds shared some pictures on his Instagram. In one of the deleted scenes, Peter Poole was supposed to be in a romantic relationship with Hunter B-15, and after that, he even ended up in the TVA. I think this was intended to replace Ryan Reynolds' Wade Wilson. Paradox initially planned to hire Deadpool into the TVA, so I think Peter Poole went in as a replacement at least. That's my take on it. But we will only get a clearer picture when Deadpool 4 arrives. Just recently, Ryan Reynolds shared a new deleted scene from the movie, which specifically focuses on Gambit in the Void. With Cassandra Cassandra Nova's army defeated, the last shot of Gambit sees him looking at an interdimensional portal opening up, appearing to confirm that he did indeed escape the void. As of now, Marvel Studios have not officially announced any further plans or projects involving Tatum's version of Gambit from Deadpool and Wolverine. And however, I think he might return back as cameo appearance in Phase 6 of Multiverse Saga, which is Avengers Doomsday and Secret Wars. In a recent interview, the writers of this movie mentioned that they had written a cameo for Robert Downey Jr. His cameo was supposed to happen during the Happy Hogan interview sequence. In this sequence, Deadpool would have given a heartfelt speech about joining the Avengers to Happy Hogan. At the same time, he would have said, why am I mentioning all this to you? Can't he make a cameo for this? But originally after this sequence, I mean in the actual post credit scene, they had planned a line where RDJ's Tony Stark asks Happy Hogan after the Deadpool interview, who was that you were interviewing? So the actual post credit scene for this movie was supposed to end with an RDJ cameo. According to reports, Robert Downey Jr. even read the script, but after reading it, he said no to his cameo sequence. He felt he has been cast as Doctor Doom, and if he makes an appearance as Iron Man again, it won't be good. It would feel like a contradiction for him, and it will really overshadow Doctor Doom character. Since he is into new role, he can't make an appearance in this cameo role. So Robert Downey Jr. himself canceled his cameo role deliberately from what we know. We can totally get where he's coming from. He's gearing up for a new role, and playing an old character again could confuse the audience. But honestly, the general audience wouldn't mind. They would just enjoy seeing him back on screen. And for Marvel fans, they would get it. These events are set before the snap, which means Iron Man is still alive. Marvel fans who've been following the timeline wouldn't be bothered by this cameo, they'd just have fun seeing him again, but Robert Downey Jr. felt differently and that's why his cameo scene was cancelled. Otherwise, we would have had a small cameo in this scene, with the actual post credits ending featuring Iron Man. X-Men Storm, played by Halle Berry in the original X-Men movies, was also supposed to make a cameo appearance in this movie. In a recent interview, she mentioned that no one asked her to do a cameo for Deadpool and Wolverine. Since they didn't reach out, she couldn't be in the movie. 
but we also need to consider the issues between Wesley Snipes and Halle Berry in real life. Since Blade was such an important character in this movie, even in the alternate fighting sequence, they prioritized Blade character. With Wesley Snipes' Blade appearing, it was tricky to include Halle Berry's Storm character, which is probably why Ryan Reynolds might have canceled her cameo. And remember, Ryan Reynolds was one of the writers for this movie. He wanted to give Wesley Snipes a proper send-off. I believe he might have deliberately avoided bringing any past issues onto the set. That's likely why a strong cameo like Storm's couldn't happen in this movie. Even Cyclops and Jean Grey could have made appearances, but again, the VFX cost would have been significant. Taking VFX and production budgets into account, they canceled a lot of cameos in Deadpool and Wolverine variants, which makes sense. But honestly, the final product in the movie is satisfying, so I don't think we need to worry too much about what got cut. My only wish was that we could have seen Wolverine pool and Cold War Wolverine. Those would have been awesome. Other than that, I'm happy with the movie. From what we know, director Sean Levy confirmed there are two deleted scenes, and we'll definitely break those down when the Blu-ray version drops. So what do you guys think about everything I've shared? Which sequence do you wish had made it into the movie? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to smash those like and subscribe buttons. I'll catch you guys in another awesome video. Stay safe, guys.